Man, it feels good to feel good. All right, I assume that we'll start the second half when they get back from this timeout. So. Whoa, Greg Tuhill. Michigan hired the FAU coach? Is that real? Kyle is in a good spot, isn't he? Yeah, it's perfect. He was in the Wisconsin one. All right, so YouTube. Uh, Cantoner here is running the chat thread. We are currently up 50 to 26. Yes, sir. Let's go. Uh, and let's get started. It is the 200 level. Mike Carpenter in the garage studio with Kent Elmore on mic two this evening. Hello. Thanks for having me back. Well, it's good to have you back, Kent. And then we got a, a, the peanut gallery. Can we call it that? That's what we were calling it when we invited some of our friends over. So you might see some of them in the stream tonight, which we are enjoying the first 20 minutes of game time, 50 to 26, Illinois leading Duquesne. And we're about to get back underway with the second half of what has been the most impressive half of NCAA tournament basketball I've seen from an Illinois team since. So, Ken, I was talking to Kyle during the break here. Kyle's that guy back there, YouTube feed. And I, I mentioned that I've been to one NCAA tournament game, and it was back in 2004. Illinois versus Cincinnati, second round. Darren Williams goes off for 31. I'm pretty sure Illinois was leading at halftime, but the second half is when they took off. And actually, I left that game thinking we could beat Duke, even though we lost to them that next Friday in a close game. But this is probably the most impressive half, top to bottom, that I've seen, regardless of the opponent. You're ner were you nervous at the start of this thing, or were you feeling pretty good overall? I was a little bit nervous, but I'll be honest with you. The fact that this is enough of a lead... I was saying all day, even if we're looking great at half, even if we're up 10, 12, I'm going to be really nervous at the beginning of the second half because I'm worried about what that locker room is like right now. We haven't had a lot of situations where they go into halftime up 24. But that's so the thing is we're up 24. So if they are just partying and being loose, then honestly, I don't care. So hopefully Duquesne doesn't go on the run of a lifetime here and make this a game, but... Um, yeah, I can't say I'm nervous right now. No, it's, I, it's, hard, it's hard to be because it was not just the offense, which was explosive. 50 points against the top, tw top 30 defense in the country. And Duquesne had a great defense all year. When I got to Poor Brothers a little bit early on Sunday, the A-10 championship between VCU and Duquesne was, I think, 56 to 52, something like that. It was just a really grinded out kind of game. And then even watching some of the BYU-Duquesne game on Thursday – I wasn't struck by Duquesne being excellent. I thought they were scrappy against a BYU team that just couldn't make a shot. Yeah. So I felt good. But the thing is, you know, since it's been 19 years since we've been to the Sweet 16, it doesn't matter how good you feel. When the game started, I was pacing. I was feeling it. And then I think the first media timeout, it was 13 to 6. Well, so. And you can be nervous even when you know something good's going to happen, right? I think it, it may have been you, but I think it's our friend Ben Yates who once said, when you go to a concert, concert days, we've been to so many concerts together, right? Mm -hmm. Those tailgates, it's the feeling like you're going to a game, but you know the home team's going to win, right? Yeah, the result but you're, is already... But still butterflies. They're, you're still nervous. The result is kind of predetermined, though. So it's, an, it's a nerve, it, it's nervousness that you can deal with. This right. one is because it's got the weight of 19 years on it, made this a little bit different. But, man, from the jump, they basically said, okay, we're the three seed, you're the 11 seed. And I will say, as far as seeding goes in this tournament, when you look at some of the other 11s, I would much rather play Duquesne than NC State. And I know it took every bit for them to beat Oakland. Overtime, yeah. yeah, but they're, they're a more talented team than Duquesne. Uh, I think another 11 seed, let's see, Texas Tech lost to, I forget who it was, um, but in because they were a six and they lost to an 11 seed themselves. So we actually ended – oh, Oregon, who's playing That's later right. tonight. Nice. Right. Yeah. So all in all, as I look at the box score here, 50 to 26, Illinois leading 24 points, 67% from the field against a really good Duquesne defense, 34% for Duquesne. And uh, box score is gone, but th that's really all you need to know. I could have went through the particulars, but it doesn't really matter. So how about Dane, 16 for 16 in the tournament? So he was 4 for 4 in this first half. Did he get a fourth one? And then 12 for 12. Or, sorry. Um, Must be. Oh, wait, wait, we're, wait. We're, we're trusting you, Bobo. Yeah, that no, Bo Bobo's good with the box score stuff. All right, so uh, we have 20 minutes left of game time left here. They're showing the shot chart, and Illinois getting everything they want at the rim. 
And then the three pointers they're taking, five for eleven. Coleman, I think, was three for three. Uh, Coleman was. Uh, I don't think he missed a three. Three at, at for least from three four point. from three. Oh, he didn't miss one. Okay. He's got eleven points. Yeah. But it's more than there was a sequence that struck me in the first half with about four minutes to go, and we're about to get back underway here. Where Duquesne got three rebounds on a possession, and normally that would bother me. But what really stood out to me was that they'd missed three wide-open shots, and that just told me, okay, this is the kind of offense you're dealing with tonight. So we'll see. Ken, you're talking about the first four minutes here. We're underway. It's crucial. I mean, yeah, I, listen, I don't want to be the downer or anything like this. This is, this is a time to get excited as an Illini fan. But if they go on a quick, you know, little 9-2 or something sure. like that, I mean, this, this team's not going to give up. No, they, they um, won't. And I think that... W- what you had mentioned is fair. Uh, finding out how this Illinois team reacts in a situation that they haven't, as good as the season's been, they have not been in many blowouts comparatively. If anything, they might win games by nine or ten points, but it's because they pull away late. Being up 24 at halftime is something they haven't felt probably since right. November. Right. So we got a take here from Duquesne. Ty Rogers on their stretch four. The shot is no good. And good Illinois. Rebound. Here we go. Yeah, great defense and a great Keep rebound going. from Quincy. Keep going. You, you got to. We were talking about this, you know, in that that locker room culture at halftime, right? And honestly, you do you you don't Come fault on, them if they were just partying, doing whatever. But you got to have some sort of stretch goal, right? Are are, are we in there? Wow, oh, Quincy, uh, they had the ver- might have grazed the front part of the rim there, but I like that he got the open look. It's a Duquesne ball with 19-12 to go. The three is up and good, so it is a 50 to 29 Illinois lead. Six point swing from Quincy. Dog on it, but. Uh, yeah, no, Ken, I do think that the first four minutes, just in terms of the temperature and how you're playing, the first defensive possession was great for Illinois. Wow, there you. Go. Whoa. Made that look so easy, too. Who threw that to him? Damask. That was Damask. Check if you can how many assists he has tonight, because I know we fed Dane a couple a, times. He's got a few, yeah. All right, so Illinois with 30 points in the paint to 16 for Duquesne. Answer the three with an alley-oop to Quincy. Fourth assist and for Damask. Four, okay. Yeah. Quick foul here on Terrence, 52-29. Not, not quite on a triple-double watch uh, tonight. Looks like uh, Duquesne's about to get another shot here because that's a little bit ahead of it. So yeah. they'll hit, I think, another three. Is that right? Yeah. Looks like it. Okay, so that would be two threes. Sorry, we're, I got the box score here, and we got the Hulu feed a little bit late. Here's Jimmy Clark with Terrence on him. Is he just going to stop and pop? I don't know. Yeah, he there is. There we go. I hit the score. A 27-footer. All right. Back to a 20-point lead for Illinois. Uh, Wait, we're still in. We're okay. Well, I, I think it's all about responding okay. to their early, okay. their early barrage. Clark has nine for Duquesne, two for three from three. Here's Marcus, booty ball. He kicks it over to Coleman. The three is up. No good. Quincy with the board. Get Great big. board, Quincy. Here we go. Back to Coleman. Coleman trying to drive it in, looking for Damask. Damask will be able to do booty ball here if he wants to. Kicks it back over to Coleman. Coleman, the three is open. Ugh. You see, they didn't even look for Terrence there in that possession. 17.40 to go. Duquesne looking down low. Damask on their five. So if they get it to him, they might have an advantage here. Oh, Terrence gets the steal. Here we go. Come on, Terrence, finish. Showtime, baby. There, there we go. go. Illinois responding to the early baskets from Duquesne back up 54 to 32. And look at that. No celebrate. They're just all business now. Business I like right that. Now. I like that. Yep. 10 to 2 fast break points for Illinois. Transition, of course, helping. All right, so here's Jimmy Clark again. Coleman comes to help out. The three is up. No good. That was a bit of a force. And here's Damask. A break opportunity? Looking for Quincy. All the way. There we Quincy go. up and in. Illinois just looking so sharp, Kenton. Speaking Man. of business. There we go. A little yingling. They call that Irish crickets. Yes. When you, you need to, when you need to uh, either bet on Illinois or get yingling, you go That's across right. the border. Go across the state border. That's Maybe right. get some beef house while you're there. Uh, yep. The three is up, and it's good for Duquesne. So it's back to a 21-point lead. So Duquesne has hit three threes already, Kenton. And they've cracked into the lead by three points total, which wow. tells you tells you a lot. Well, you've already got six points yourselves in this opening stretch. Here's Damask getting a pick. Damask up in. I mean, they can't stop us around the rim. 58 to 35. Ben Yates in the chat thread knows what I'm talking about, those Irish crickets, baby. 
What are Irish crickets? It's Can we say sa- it in the, the sound of? Oh, I like that cricket. All right, here's Jimmy Clark again working through the screen. Terrence is on him. Three threes already for Duquesne this happened, yet they're still down 23. They've cracked into that lead by one point. Nice pass. The wow. take from Duquesne is Even no good. better defense. Ah, oh, does not get the loose ball. It's up and in for Duquesne. A few too many second chance we points if there's a that, gripe today. Look, that can only happen so many times. It, you're, you're really happy that you have this big of a cushion because Duquesne, like we said, they are not quitting. If anything, that would be the one complaint tonight is just some of these loose balls that they're coming up with. But that's really kind of what Duquesne does. Well, and we had that those issues in the first half too, right? Yeah, so true. It's not like it's not like we're looking. We're, we're not looking any worse in these first four and a that's half. That's a minutes, flop. Right? Be there, Damask. Quincy gets the board, but we're going to get a foul on Duquesne. A break for Illinois. I believe that's a foul that will go against uh, Quincy. So uh, let's see here. Hey, everybody in YouTube, by the, by the way, for those that are in here, if you could subscribe to the YouTube feed. And I haven't even mentioned this yet. We have a, an official website now. The podcast that is right. Website. Yes, that's right. The 200levelpod.com. The 200levelpod.com. Right? Right. One with that domain. And I started writing again. So we got, uh, we got the audio, we got the video, and now we have written articles as well that I will try to do a couple times a week. So that is the 200levelpod.com. While we're in this first break, remind you that we are brought to you by DP Doe. I'm on at dpdoe.com. For all the best deals and prices, dpdoe.com. State Farm agent Brian Hansen online at brianismyguy.com. For life, auto, home, business, renters, you name it, Brian is my guy. And he could be your guy as well at brianismyguy.com. Owen Builders LLC. I'm on at owenbuildersllc.com. For home additions, patios, decks, as we get into the warmer months, why not get a free quote for your next home project from owenbuildersllc.com. And finally, Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing. Give them a call today at 217-841-4728 and schedule your AC check. Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing, your home's best friend. That's 217-841-4728. So is it stackable that you're... What, what what was the platform that you put that article on? Where you? Oh, Substack. Substack. Yeah, Substack. so Substack is where the articles will be. And, yeah, I, I think I was just inspired after what was a really encouraging game on, on Thursday. And this is basically following suit, except this is a full 24 minutes so far, whereas the first game, I, I don't think Illinois played bad in the first half. It wasn't that. It was more that I didn't know what to think, and because of our tournament – you know, history in the past, it, it was a little bit worrisome, right? So to see this from the jump, and yes, Duquesne kind of, you know, making, let's call it their run early, but they, they have such a wide cushion that they need to cover, and I don't know if they're capable of it. And then Illinois responding to threes by just getting right back to the rim. Yeah. I mean, that, the one thing we knew coming in is we had a size advantage, and Illinois is kind of bowling their way to the rim whenever they want. It's, it's encouraging, to say the least. Yeah. They definitely scouted this while they're doing everything right. <laughs> okay, uh, the crowd in the garage is a little bit a little bit cold. I will say, I will say, I uh, I'm enjoying a nice uh, overhead heat lamp here. I'm I'm actually a little toasty. I feel like uh, that scene in Dumb and Dumber where it's like, oh, you better take my extra pair of gloves. Gather around the campfire, guys. Come on around here. All right, so so yeah, I I uh, I, I I read your article. It's a nice nice little. Three four minute read. Yeah, I, right? I try to keep it. Uh, and uh, short. obviously, I'm biased, and I've I've read your things before. Um, but uh, yeah, very well written. You 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 could you could like you could teach that for a living. I, I could. You could. I'll consider that. Yeah, very well. Uh, all right, we got Texas and Tennessee. Which, by the way, that game's going on right now. The late game is going to be Oregon Creighton. And I'll try I got to get, I got Tennessee going fall. I got Tennessee going to the final four. Me too. I haven't beaten Purdue in the Elite Eight. I called Gonzaga too. Okay, so Not, it will be Illinois ball, and what a break there. So right before the timeout, Quincy went up for a rebound, and they called a foul on Duquesne, who had gotten under Quincy's body. So Quincy active, making an impact out there, which is good to see. Here's Marcus. We got 17 on the shot clock. And he finds Coleman, right side of the arc here, looking for Ty posting up. Ty? Has some room here. Will he take a baseline? No, he kicks it back oh, out okay. to the mask. Here's oh, Terrence for Terrence, three. Let's go. There we go. The he had a couple good. bad misses early, too. He needed that. 61 to 37. They keep showing this group of young Illini fans having a good time. And what I've enjoyed, Kenton, is that 
I did worry if this was a close game that Iowa State, which has a huge contingent out there, would of course be on Duquesne's side. You have not allowed them to get into the game at all as far as opposing fans. And an offensive foul on the moving screen. Illinois will have the ball up 61-37 to 37 with 14.40 to go. I love hearing you say that. Isn't this nice? I love hearing you say that. There's no, there's not any tension right now, and I thought that this would, this was a no. game where if you, I would have had to take one team against the spread or with the spread, I would have taken Illinois minus nine and a half. I, yeah. I would have, yeah, but I would have assumed that it was finally your offense really started clicking in the last ten minutes of the game after a hard fought first thirty against Duquesne, but no. Uh, it's just from the outset, pure dump. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Terrence Let's Shannon go. Jr. Throw a like for Terrence <laughs> Shannon Jr. 63 to 37. Absolutely bananas what I'm watching right now. This is kind of surreal. I'm just. Terrence with 21. A crap eating grin on my face right now. I'm trying to keep it clean on the podcast. 14 minutes to go. Here's Duquesne. This is Jimmy Clark taking it to the rim, up Ooh. and in, and a weak foul from Coleman. So this is a chance for a three-point play here. Well, you say you love what you're seeing. I, I, I hate to sound greedy, okay, okay? But you are seeing a team that's comfortably up. You are seeing. Oh, well, that is giving. Are you going in the direction of a few? I was about. Miscues? I was about to say you're seeing our top. I was going to say a word like ceiling or something like that, and then I realized that's not great. But you're seeing what we have been frustrated about all year that we have known that this team could do. And they're doing it at the absolute right time. Thanks. We're just working with the Y'all space heater good? in yeah, here. Uh, like Kenton and I got the benefit fall. where we have the space heaters to our left and directly above us. Yeah, I, uh, I'm quite warm. All right, I, so it is I'm, I'm sorry. a 23-point Illinois lead. Dane checks in for Illinois. He has made 18 consecutive field goal attempts, dating back to the Big Ten tournament. So three for three tonight. 14 minutes left in the game. And Illinois continues to attack the rim at will. Duquesne is matching them offensively uh, this half. In fact, they're one point better than Illinois in the first six minutes. Yeah, it was 24, right? Yep. yep. Now 23. Damas brings it across, across half court with 20 in the shot clock. Here's Dane picking. No. Damas working through here. All the way. All the way. Up. There it is. Oh, my God. Just in a zone right now. 65 to 40, Illinois. Why are we so blessed? Baker's dozen, Bob. <laughs> Thirteen thirty-five to go. Duquesne back on offense, and we got Justin Harmon, which I actually think Justin's had some pretty good minutes defensively and a couple good boards as well. Just anything to get him feeling good about himself again. Wow. The floater no good for Duquesne. And a nice board day. from Way Dane. Where go, Dane? Big Dane. Man, all right, another Terrence. big game for Dane. Yes, Dane, Dane is winning. Terrence up and in wow. and one. Jeez, Louise. Twenty twenty-three. Man, pure domination. So he's going to score maybe thirty. Dane is winning more, more hearts on the national stage. And he's an easy guy to root for. And oh, he's, he's a great guy yeah. to root for. He has had well. That just he's a much more him, svelte but. version of the North Carolina State guy. Yeah, for, that, that guy had some had some girth to him. Didn't and they he? hey, they're in the Sweet Sixteen as well. Yeah. So Terrence will go the line for an and one. And just like this, we're up twenty six points. So you withstood the first punch from Duquesne, which you knew you would get. And you're already seven minutes in this half. Make that a 28-point Illinois lead. I'm trying to think here because to give you uh, some context, the last time we played a lower-seeded team lower than 11, I believe, well, I guess there's been some 4-13 mixed in there. But I go back to the one-seeded 05 team that against Fairleigh Dickinson. Fairleigh Dickinson. That was they, not an easy – No, it, they were up one at halftime. Yep. And then they ended up winning by, I think, 11 – so I wonder what the all-time spread for margin in an NCAA tournament victory is for Illinois, and they might be approaching that here. It's 68-40, to 40, Terrence on the drive. The three is no good. Dane gets the board because he's just that much bigger than any— Oh, my God, he's going baseline. Dane danger. Up and under layup from Dane. He's smiling, understandably. The garage loves Dane danger. We all love Dane danger. A bad miss for Duquesne. That's Out of bounds, Illinois ball. Up 30 30- points 70 to 40 this is beautiful they've, they've never been up 30 in a tournament game i don't Mike know if they have i mean that that the 0405 team is obviously your benchmark right yeah but and they didn't have any blowouts lot, well, no i mean like you said fairly dickinson was close 
They beat Nevada uh, in the second the round by maybe 12 games. or 13. I don't know. Yeah, so you had, I mean, Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Even Wisconsin-Milwaukee, yeah. I think you'd be by 12 or 13. But this one right here, I would have to go back to the game that I was at. And if anyone in the YouTube feed who's got, you know, can do a quick look up, the Illinois-Cincinnati game in 04. Oh, yeah. Because that ended up being a blowout. That Justin would be Harmon, a deep, deep stat find. Justin largest Harmon margin of victory really. in the tournament for Illinois. Somebody in the YouTube chat. Figure that out. All right, here is Duquesne back on offense. No good. They, and a rebound. They're not making teams. anything. No, they can't. I mean, their offense we knew was not good, but good Lord. Here's Terrence. He will go to the line to shoot two. So you were at that the Duke game, though. No. Well, the Duke game was the, the next the, week. Right. The Duke yeah. game the next weekend was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And we were at that game. Ah, it was competitive. Off camera, but Illinois, Duke. Um, Chris Duhan's injured rib was all the rage yeah, that game. That was that would have been to get to the Elite Eight, right? That was a Sweet 16 game. Correct. Yeah, you woke me up in the... I'm, I'm talking to my dad. He's off camera here. You woke me up in the morning and told us, you said, no school today. We drove down to Atlanta. The we, morning of? We picked up Cousin Drew. We went down. Damn. And uh, at the uh, at the Georgia Dome, yes, we watched, and it was it, it was, was a pretty good game. I mean, at Duke, the by the end, you know, as you knew, I mean, Duke, yeah. Duke had the advantage all game, and they were a legit. Well, and that one was seed. Duke. I mean, you, you say Duke in their peak Coach K years, which was like decades, but okay. So here it is: the Illinois Cincinnati game back then was ninety two to sixty eight. So thank you, Justin, for that. And you did beat Drexel by twenty nine in twenty twenty one. You know what's so weird, Bobo? And maybe it's just hindsight because of the Loyola game, but that Drexel game didn't feel like Illinois was clicking. Drexel was just a JV team. But that 92-68, to 68, so that margin against Cincinnati would have been, what, 24? I'm not really good at math. That is 24, right? 92-68, yeah. 24-point lead. So right now you're up to 30 and a chance to extend it after the break Man, here. I remember that Cincinnati game, too. And I remember I remember where I watched it. We watched it at, at the McCowan household. You remember that Cincinnati team. The thing that you worried the most about them is they were tough. They were mean. And you wondered, like, officiating could really be a difference in that game. It's just it's a team that you are a particular kind of scared about. Sure. And, and we did fine. <sighs> this is... Um I woke up today feeling good, and I will say that you know part of what I wrote on Friday was that from the minute that the seedings or the brackets were unveiled on Sunday, I didn't have that pit in my stomach feeling that I have had before, right? And I think what ultimately makes me feel uh, or made me feel better about it before even Duquesne beat BYU, because I think Illinois would have had a pretty good matchup against BYU despite their ability to get hot. But it just seemed that for the first time in a long time, there were no narratives. There was no boogeymen out there waiting to get you. It was just, okay, here's your path to get to the Sweet 16, and it's very doable. Right. And you didn't even have to play John Gross's Akron team, which would not have bothered me, but it would have been something to think about when I don't want to think about anything, right? Well, what, what you're basically saying is it's yours to screw up, right? And that's what we can get really nervous about because, let's be honest, this team knows how to be its own worst enemy. It, 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 it has done it earlier it's in this year. <laughs> Apparently we're still having some. Uh, some they're they're some freezing back here. We, we're just. I I, and I, 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 I have, I have to say, this here spot is a very very warm spot, but it comes with the burden of a microphone. That's true. So anyone uh, can join Mike too if they we're, want. We're, to. we're 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 having a party tonight, guys. The garage is oh, wide open. We're getting buzzed. Somebody I'm tap me on the shoulder if they want to spot in front of this mic. I'm I'm happy to. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to give you the heat. Just 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 do Mike a favor and don't be a. Uh, uh, well, honest, a dead mic next to him. Honestly, though, you you can just scoot your mic over this way, and they can someone can take their heating shifts right Here's over there. Here's some brotherly love. Somebody want to scoot scoot to my left? It's 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 really hot over there. Seventy one to forty, Illinois, with a thirty one point lead after Terrence makes his first free throw. Here's a second attempt coming up. <laughs> it is up. It is good. It is a seventy two to forty lead for Illinois, and I think they are going to take heating shifts over here. That's fine, though. I hear my we brother got in my ear going, uh, this, is, this is nice and warm <laughs> Isn't over it nice? Here. All right, here we go. Burn like a kitten. 11.40 to go. Duquesne back on offense. A take, up and in. And Justin Harmon fouls him. Um, I, you can't, I just don't think you can play him anymore. I don't understand. He's not giving you anything. I mean, these are all small potatoes when you're up 30 points in a game, but he's literally not doing anything for you. So did you read all these? So it was 29 against Drexel. 
San Diego State, we beat them by 29 and 01. Northwestern State by 42 and two. Okay, so there have been bigger margins, but those were one versus 16s. Yeah. Man, that 2000, that was, was that Bill's first year? Yes, first it was. Year? Bill's first Elite, year. Elite Eight, right? Lost Arizona. Yeah, we, oh man, that was Arizona with yeah, 35 fouls or whatever it might have been. That game. Well, yeah, but that was Luke Walton was on the team and Bill Walton was on the call. I remember you know, that. I was lucky enough to be at Legends that game where we couldn't quite hear the feed, the audio feed. If it, I recall, was I was at Esquire, and they had it on full blast. And uh. The old days of Illini board, which is the first message board for Illinois sports, they, they talked about it quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, I got a sense of it vaguely while watching it at Legends. Here's Luke for the three. Up there we and go, good. Goody. God dang. We're just clicking on all cylinders. 75 to 43. Uh, but, no, I do think, though, that – the impressive thing about this, Duquesne, we knew, did not have a good offense, and that's bearing out to be true. They only have 43 points with 11 minutes to go, and they're just kind of shooting much better. Oh, look at Ty. Ty getting up on defense here in the corner of the perimeter. This guy's trying to break him down. The fadeaway's up and good. Wow. I mean, what are you going to do? I have no problem with that defense. Oh, no. I mean, and good for them. They, they've been pretty cold. Yes, but not this half. That's the thing, though, Ken, is they had 24 not really. at the start of the half. They scored 21 points already in nine minutes, and yet you've extended your lead. Just all of a sudden we have. What the hell yeah. was that, Ty? He just throws it out of bounds. 100 or is back it. in our sights. I, go, I think it was Michael way earlier on. And kind of like what I was saying, again, to that, that locker room culture, you still have to have some sort of stretch goal, something to go for. Uh, this was right before the second half started. I want to hit 100 and hold them to 65. Let's go. That's I, doable. It's, it's it's doable. It's bold. But, yeah, I mean, let's have something to uh, to stay fired up about. All right, here we go. Duquesne back on offense. 30-point 30 30 Illinois lead in an NCAA tournament <laughs> game. Insane. In a second-round game. The floater is up and good for Duquesne. It's down to 28 with 10, 18 to go. And a quick timeout from Duquesne to try to regroup one last time and see if they can't stage a, a furious rally here. Got to give a shout-out to Jacob. In the, I've got a McAllen 18-year-old that I'm wow. going to sip on after this game. Well, don't jinx it. The game's not over yet. But have it, you can have it ready. Just don't start sipping on it yet. But we have a few things we're going to do celebratory as well, some of which you can see on the feed and some of which we cannot show you on the feed. Yeah. That is true. The sign, if the, it's standard definition, so you probably can't read the sign, but that might give you an inclination as to what we'll watch. All right, so <laughs> for those of you that were on <laughs> the first round game, oh, the peanut gallery loves it. Okay, so we have, you know, I, I will say that the Big Ten so far has acclimated itself fairly well in this tournament. I thought Michigan State just ended up looking <laughs> about like an eight or nine seed would look against a one seed UNC. Purdue looked great yesterday. They, they did after what I thought was just kind of a mediocre first half from them. Uh, oh, Wisconsin, yeah. Wisconsin's their grade guard effect. I can't really judge the Big Ten based on grade guard, but I'm kind of interested to see Northwestern and what they do tomorrow because while they are playing a one seed, is it Houston, I believe, is who they're going to play? I think that's the bracket they're in there in the Houston bracket. I'm just interested. YouTube, to, confirm it for me. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Bo if Boo Booey goes off and the defense that Northwestern plays. And I, I don't think Florida Atlanta looked all that great yesterday by any means, but I will be interested to see if Northwestern can't hang. If sure. Houston isn't a team, if that's who, in fact, they're playing, and I forget my bracket, if they can't be in there with 10 minutes to go, like five, six-point game. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we're in the Big Ten. We know that, that Northwestern team, especially when Boo is crazy. Yeah, Annoyingly I, 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 tough. Literally, the word I was going to say was annoying, and that's not a discredit to Boo Boo. I mean, he's great, but... Yeah, that team is dangerous when they are firing all, on all cylinders. While we have a break here, a reminder that the 200 level UConn, is... They're in the UConn bracket. They're in the, oh, well. <laughs> Thanks, King Abbott, man. Well, then we are rooting for them because we would prefer UConn to get out of our bracket. They're, they're, they're in the same bracket. They're in our bracket. That's yeah. right. Okay. The 200 level brought to you by DP Doe, also State Farm Agent Brian Hansen, Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing, and Owen Builders, LLC. A reminder for those tuning in that we have a website, the 200 level pod. Dot com, the 200 level pod dot com. And we also have a new written component, writing some articles, including tomorrow. I'll get one up there as well. And uh, depending on how this game ends, it's looking pretty good right now. We will make sure to get a couple more this week before any potential future games. See, I'm choosing my words carefully despite the big lead. You're being humble. Tennessee, Texas, two point game with a minute to go. Low scoring, 55 53. 55 53. Tennessee's under, tough. Under is going to catch. Well, 
over time, the under doesn't cash, maybe. But now I will say yeah. though that Texas has surprised me because I picked. Let's see, Texas played. I want to say Colorado State in the first first round. Yeah, and that was smoked like, him. Yeah, Colorado scored like what, like thirteen points in the first. Uh, half I think that was it, right? Which was after their first round game where they held Virginia to thirteen points or whatever in the first half. <laughs> And Wouldn't then, you love to have that kind of defense, it, Mike? Oh, my God. But the thing is, what an ugly... Here we are seeing Illinois 75 points with 10 minutes to go against a top 25, top 30 defense. We l- Listen, we got to score 100 points tonight, right? Yes. I mean, I mean come on. That's, I think they that's will. Not, that's, not, that's not unreasonable. Coleman, pump fake. Oh, oh Luke's got... Oh, Luke knew Luke he was going to fire it, it, too. That's all right. Coleman's got the just... Throwing up here. Oh, oh, double dribble. Got away with it. He gets it okay. off the rim, but it will be Duquesne ball down 30 with 9.45 to go. The three for Duquesne is up, and it is no good. And Terrence gets the board. Nice. Wow, they cannot shoot very well. And they, they've actually been shooting relatively well this half. Coleman is going to kick it over to Damask. Pretty far up on the arc here, about 35 feet away from the basket with 15 to go in the shot clock. 9.20 to go in the game. Marcus, is he going to just stop and pop a three here? Or is he actually going to try to get to the basket? Illinois kind of, you know, the 100 points is interesting, Kenton, because it seems like they're milking a little bit of clock on each possession, too. Yeah. Here's Terrence. Oh, my God. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. Duquesne wants to travel. They are not going to get it. That's NBA continuation. All right, anything in the YouTube feed here? Let's go back to it. Let's see. Um, we're all Wildcat fans tomorrow. Yeah, I, well. Sure. As much as, we, as much as we say, you know, you can be scared of Northwestern, that, that's in the regular season. Now, absolutely what I love to uh, – so that would be to get to the Final Four playing Northwestern. <laughs> Could you imagine? Wouldn't that be crazy? I would be sick to my stomach that day just to the possibility of not making it because of them. But ah. would, I rather, would I rather play them than UConn if yeah, you got there? Of yeah, course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't want any part of UConn unless we have to. Would you rather lose to Northwestern than UConn? Yes, I think. Oh, I think. No, I mean, I, no. I think so. I, I'd rather well, face them. I would okay. much more prefer to lose to UConn, given the choice. Yeah, Look at us being I able guess. to have this conversation with nine minutes left in the game. I know, right? Pretty nice. I, I worded that wrong. Would you, if it's if not you, would you rather have Northwestern or UConn Hell out of the bracket? Hell no, I don't want Northwestern anywhere near the Final Four. Really? No. Come on, man. No they, love for the no. conference? No, I don't give All a crap right. about the conference. All I right. especially don't give a crap about them. All right. But what, a, what a privileged place we are in where we can even joke about that. With this, this much time left. I mean, listen, UConn's probably going to be about an eight and a half, nine, nine and a half point favorite tomorrow. Fine. Let, us, let, let, let us know in the YouTube. Now, obviously, Illinois all the way, right? But out of this bracket, if not Illinois, would you rather see Northwestern get to the Final Four or UConn? Okay. Are you, te- are you team Mike or are you team it's me? It's fair to pose that, but I think the idea of losing to Northwestern is just sickening. Yeah, and that's why I said I worded it wrong. If you get to that Elite Eight game against Northwestern, you don't not, uh, losing to Northwestern would suck so okay, much more fair. than that's losing fair. to UConn. That's fair. Luke misses that three. It's 8.15 to go here. 77-49. Duquesne's going to stop and pop a three. It is good. So it is a 25-point game. We're basically even here in the second half. So Illinois defensively... Eh, um, I don't want to say reverting because Duquesne's made a pretty good number of threes <laughs> pretty far out. We got 7.55 to go here. Damask over to Harmon. Back to Damask. And a travel. He had a weird little hop step there. We got Boston Illini Leibs in the chat. I finally realized why God put my family in Boston 10 years ago. See you Thursday. Well, cheers, buddy. Yeah. I hope you get, you're going to see some Illini Live uh, second, second weekend tournament basketball in person. Yeah. That's got to be a good feeling. I know that Jeremy and Derek and Joey from Alana Inquirer, they're pumped of the possibility of going to Boston as well, and in understandably. The, in the garden, right? The uh, uh, TD Waterhouse Garden or whatever yeah, they call the it. Yeah, the garden. The old, uh, is it called TD Garden? Is that it, Kyle? That's Something like that. Yeah, I think it's so. Yeah, it's, it's the, where they put Celtics play. What do you call that tile? The... Uh, the parquet. Parquet tile. Parquet floor. Yeah. Yeah, that will be pretty cool as long as Illinois holds on here in the last eight minutes of regulation. They oh, are gosh, up 25. It is going to be a Duquesne ball because of Damas' little travel there. So I think a couple more stops, you feel fine. It would be quite the run for the ages. Duquesne is making some shots, so I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. Nah, uh, we're fine. Bobo wants UConn over Northwestern, if not Illinois. 
Yeah, I just I, I don't want Northwestern anymore. One vote for Mike. Yeah, sorry. I just I, might, I may be in the minority here. I, 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 I've only met a few Northwestern fans in my life, and I'm just not a fan. Though I would understand why people probably tire of Illinois fans because we got a chip on our shoulders and we're just always really angsty. I, I think a lot of that angst comes from the fact that it's been 19 years since we made a Sweet 16. By no means is tonight some absolutely incredible accomplishment given just the opponent. But on the other hand, it is pretty incredible for me and you. You were, would have been a sophomore in high school in 05, right? That 05 run. Yep. I was a senior in high school. We are yeah, now junior, fully, junior, senior, yeah. fully grown adults that now will see potentially our first Sweet 16 appearance since 2005. And, you know, it's interesting because my wife being a Michigan State fan, even though they lost today, you know, that's kind of the norm for them. Sweet 16 appearances is just what they expect. And meanwhile, and I, I feel this way, and it can get kind of annoying when I just talk about, oh, the 05 team to this or that, it started feeling like the 85 Bears, right? Where you love what they did, but you also get tired of having to mention them again and again. So it would be nice just starting with a Sweet, St Sweet 16 appearance to remind yourself that it isn't like there's some hex against Illinois basketball. Yeah. But for the last 19 years, it's been hard to not feel like there might have been. So yeah. I understand why fans have looked at this last almost two decades and felt... God, can we get a break? Can we finally break through and get to the second week? Well, and are we are we ready to talk about this too? Obviously, uh, in recent years, it's been Underwood's Achilles heel, right? Yes. Can't get to the second weekend. And he was he, 0 for 3 in second round games coming into today. Yeah. Or 0 for 2. Let's see. Would have been Loyola, Houston. I guess that's it. Yeah, this is his fourth NCAA tournament appearance because it would have yeah, been and, his fifth and, if not for COVID. And I think also... It's safe to say that this is the easiest path you've had to the second weekend. Hundred percent so far. So you're just like like you said earlier, you're you're just taking care of business, right? So on one hand, it's like okay, you lose to Houston, that's tough. Um, you lose an, AA, but I think he had gotten so much crap for that, and that's just no longer a storyline because dare I say it was seven thirty five left to go in the game. We have made the second weekend. Harmon just had a monster block right there. So Decane got another offensive board, and Justin Harmon just knocked it. Watch this. God dang. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to, even if that would have been a foul, it would have been a good foul because he knocked the crap out of that. You could see from a shot there that the arena has emptied out quite a bit, probably most of the Iowa State fans. And yeah. Justin Harmon, I think, shook the Dixon guy <laughs> with how hard that block was. So. Uh, well done, Justin. I mean, you aren't asking him to score anymore because I just don't know if he's even capable of it. He's in his head offensively, but yeah. if he can do something defensively, that's he's great. He's doing something. Donnie Quattro in the chat. We got to win this. If we lose, I will be embarrassed. Thanks, Donnie. Well, <laughs> certainly so. <laughs> well, it would be embarrassing if you lost a 25-point lead with 7.25 to go. Yeah. Another three-point. No. Pump fake. Taking it to the rim up and good. It's a 23-point lead. So Duquesne has outscored Illinois by one this half. And it's time to tighten up for Illinois to finish this game strong. Keep them at more than arm's length. Most of the starters are still in for Illinois. The exception being awesome. Harmon in for Ty Rogers. Oh, what? Well, yeah. A feed down low to Coleman. And a possession arrow will stay with Illinois. They tie him up. Coleman probably waited a little bit too long, got a little bit too patient down there. So right now I'm looking up at the score. Tennessee is up two with three seconds to go, 60 to 58. Oregon Creighton in a pretty tight game. I mean, God, look at Creighton. They get the 11 seed, but it's Oregon, and it's a one-point game. So what a break for Illinois to get this advantage. I mean, out of all the 11 seeds in the tournament, you got a pretty decent matchup here. Yeah, I'm trying to keep uh, keep track of some of those. Let me know in the YouTube chat, guys, if uh, what happens with that Tennessee game. All There's right. Too many windows to juggle here. Also got to think, I don't think I've done this yet. Champagne Showers Podcast Network, appreciate their partnership. And also Poor Brothers Craft Tap Room in downtown Champaign. We were there Sunday for the Big Ten Tournament Championship against Wisconsin. And, and appreciate Jason and all those guys over there for hosting us. Great spot to watch NCAA tournament action with tons of craft beers. Awesome cocktail selection as well. TVs throughout the bar, including one right above the ski ball table, if you're into that. We're back now with, let's see here, 77.54, and I think about seven minutes left in the game. You know, it's all about 
I don't know, eye test, which they've clearly passed that. But for the last seven and a half minutes here, Kenton, or I guess seven minutes flat, you just want to look sharp. Oh, yeah. And it's been a eh, kind of iffy four or five minutes. I, 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 I have no complaints so far this half. Coleman three, go, Coleman no nine. good, but it's going to be an offensive rebound. Tennessee, Over to Terrence. For Justin Carpenter, Tennessee won. <laughs> wow. Tennessee wins. Okay. Terrence takes it. He's got 30, I think they just said. And 31 is the NCAA tournament record for Illinois, scored by Darren Williams against Cincinnati in 04. So Terrence is one bucket away from setting the program record for points in an NCAA tournament game. So I don't remember who Up said it. No I think good. it was yeah. before the uh, pot actually started early in the YouTube stream. Getting ready for that cigar. Yeah, you can, you can I, start prepping uh, it. 620 to go, and Terrence is going to look to score and get his record here, it looks like. I'm starting to feel confident enough. Yeah, well, here goes Terrence. Attacks, nope, it's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to be... That's, I think, Terrence's third or fourth turnover, so that's Duquesne, their ability to get handsy, which is the word that Illinois used in a lot of those press conferences yesterday. Duquesne is really good at turning the ball over, and they've done that at an okay clip tonight against Illinois, and I think the third for Terrence. 6.05 to go. 25-point lead, Terrence. Here we go. Oh, he just can't quite keep it in bounds. I thought you're he had a break okay, there. You're okay. You're okay. And Terrence collapses into the managers on the bench. Nah, he's or some of the support I staff. Yeah, he's got 30 points. He's good. He's fine. 10 for 14 from the field, 8 for 9 from 2, 2 for 5 from 3. We did go on a little bit of it. So uh, Goody had a 3 with 11.25 left, and then we were on. Wasn't a 32-point lead? Yeah, but we did not make another field goal until that last one. Wow. After that. Coleman knocks it out. 5.51 to go. Still Duquesne ball. Eight seconds left in the shot clock. Good looking out, Bobo. Bobo's on it, man. Between him and I, I barely Terry. need to look at the... Yeah, seriously. Him and Terry Capper are the box score gurus. They, they know what's going on. And they keep me kind of informed of this. Terrence takes a seat... And I don't know if that'll be for the game, but if so, he will not break the record tonight. It looks like it, maybe. 5.40 to go. It is a 23-point Illinois lead. All starters except Terrence out there, and I think depending if Duquesne makes it any closer, Terrence would come back in. Here's Damask. Whoa. Up and in. Good God. And one. Damask is looking like himself again. Marcus under the basket. It's just... It's just remarkable. I should actually rephrase that. I said Mark is starting to look like himself again. <sighs> what I meant was, even though he had a triple-double in the first game, I think as far as scoring, Historic. scoring was still a little bit more labored for him. That's why he got so many assistant well, rebounds yeah. earlier. So today, as far as scoring is concerned, he just seems to be much more in rhythm, and he's getting anything he wants today. Marcus makes the three-point play. DGL coming in. Cool. DGL will uh, come is that in. DGL's for... mom right there. No, that no, that's is Goody's. Damask. Uh, Damask family from Wisconsin. Oh, okay, I see Goody on the bottom of her sweater. I... They've gotten in this habit where a lot of these guys will wear their teammates in IL gear. All right. So I think that's what it is. All right. All right. DGL out there for some defense for Team Fouls in Illinois. So DGL, if you got a couple to give, that's fine. Love the aggressiveness. A foul on Illinois. Are they going to call this a shooting foul? I'm not sure. Looks like they will on Damask with 5:14 to go. All right. I mean, what's there to say? I mean, this is just. <laughs> we've been this we've kind been, of dead air is fine. It's good dead air. It's we've we've been air. chilling here for this entire half. We've been having a party here in the garage. Oh man, I feel the great right now. The biggest problem we've had tonight, Mike, is keeping everybody warm. Yeah. What's that? Keeping everybody warm. Yes. Well, that's I, I been just, the biggest problem. Yeah, I I wish it was about 10 degrees warmer, which it will, fortunately, on Thursday. And Coleman gets the board off the missed free throw. Here's Quincy. Quincy being aggressive. Look at him. Uh, Quincy, you got to make that. Oh, Jesus. oh that. Oof. He fell over I the hope Duquesne okay. defender. Yeah. And this is going to be a three-pointer for Duquesne. No good, fortunately. Slow it down. You know, on one hand, I like Quincy's aggressiveness, but on the other, you're up 25 points. Just what are you doing? Okay, Quincy, thank you. Illinois set up some offense, half-court offense, with 4.45 to go and 20 left in the shot clock. This is Damask, and it looks like Terrence will set for the rest of the game despite not breaking the single-game record for points. You said it was 31, right? 31 for Darren. They must, yeah. not, they must not know that. They might not, yeah. Here's Damask in the lane. Fade away. No good. It'll go to Duquesne with 4.25 to go. 
still in 25 point Illinois lead. People, are they sweating the over under in Vegas? I don't think it'll hit the over. It's slowed down considerably here with four, four ten to go. Decane on the drive, up and in. It is a twenty three point Illinois lead, eighty two to fifty nine with four minutes left. So Illinois will milk clock on each of their possessions to just try to get to the end here. Yep. And it looks like even Duquesne. Well, it looks like Duquesne's still playing most of their starters. Quincy coming up for the pick for Damas. Damas taking it to the oh, rim. Let's go! Oh let's my go. God! Where's the foul? I mean, he just scooped it up there. Coleman damn near gets the steal. 340 to go. Marcus Damask has been amazing tonight. And a little floater for Duquesne is good. Pretty crap defense right there. I don't know what Ty was doing. Guys, you know, listen. This feels great, but finish strong. Okay. Here we go, Nico. Scrub's coming in with 330 to go. Uh, Dane, Dane ain't no scrub. Dane's not. I'm but here sorry. Here comes Nico. Nico a chance for points in two straight tournament games. Marcus with the ball, 3.15 to go, 15 on the shot clock. He's going to do booty ball yet again. Oh. And, whoa! Oh. Quincy, one-hand dunk put back to give Illinois the 25-point yeah. lead again. Question, and I need someone in the chat feed, or maybe you can look it up, Kent, how many points Damask has. I'm going to say a quiet 24 because I feel like he's been on one tonight. Marcus Damask has, it looks like, 17. That's it? Yeah. Well, 17, what's his, 17, 2, and 6. Field goals. How many, what's his uh, from the field? 7 for 11. Uh, okay. He's only, he's only had 1 for 2 from 3. He's only shot yeah, two, threes, 2 threes, which is a little... Yeah, I mean, he's uh, selected back there. So well, but well, we were saying earlier, though, Damask, I mean, he's got the range, but he also can be so effective under the basket, and that's kind of what he's been focusing on tonight. Man. So, yeah, this so let's see. So the starters, Damask, 17. Terrence has... Uh, this has not updated because this is 26. Uh, hold on. I might be wrong. Oh, let's see here. We had 17 for Marcus, uh, but now it's updated. March Madness app. Okay, what do we got for you Marcus? And it was at 17. Not update your box score. So I am wrong. Marcus Damascus has 22. Wow. There you go. Just like that. So Terrence a 30. Terrence 30. Hawkins 11. Gary All in the first half. got 10. Good for, hey. Ty. 10 for Quincy. And Ty's on the board. but Ty's on the board with two. And then from the bench, we have Dane with six, I believe. Three for three from the field. Eight. 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 Okay, four so he's four for four. four, of course. Perfect wow. still in the tournament. Man, oh, man. And only only 13 minutes for Danger? That, that? Yeah, I mean, you haven't needed him a he whole lot. He had, what, 30 the first game, something like that? Yeah, you already had such a size advantage against them anyway. So he's made the most of his minutes. But I was going to say, that he, is, he has been... Maximum impact in those minutes if it's only been that many. Wow. Well, Illinois fans, we can start talking, and I've tried to be very careful about it, but we can start talking about something we haven't been able to for 19 years, and that is making the second weekend of the tournament. And it was such an albatross for this program, and it was an albatross for Brad Underwood specifically ever since the Loyola game. And not only do you stand to make the Sweet 16, but you look like you're going to do it in – in style, I mean, with just with ease, yeah. Against a Duquesne team that, again, uh, yeah, it is a state. I think a statement game for sure. Ah, uh, I see a little Rosie out. In the oh, yard. Rosie's going to the bathroom. Looks like they're about to go to bed. Uh, my wife, of course, Michigan State alum. Michigan State loses today. That was tough. Uh, uh, they were outclassed in the second half against UNC. And, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it was a tough mashup. But you know, we say this. I mean, even now, Michigan State is a in March. That team was outside of the bubble for most of the year. But you just know that they're going to figure something out in the postseason. And even at halftime, they were, they were down what eleven, and then they needed like a two point game. Yeah, Almost I mean, I, I I think I I put five on Michigan State, like plus four hundred at the half. You just you think that you know six times out of ten they make those games competitive, and they just didn't. UNC, yeah, like you said, just outclassed. Them. I think in some ways, look at how that game ended. I, I think in some ways. UNC is a sneaky underrated one seed that not a lot of people would probably pick to win the title, but bear in mind they made a run, I think, two or three years ago with a lot of these same guys. All right, so 86-61, to 61, we have Nico, we have Dane. Nope, sorry, we have Imani Hansberry, DGL, Ty Rogers, and Luke Goody in there. So some experienced and some not so experienced, but Ty gets the board here on a miss from Duquesne. DGL running point, looking over for Nico, back to DGL. So Illinois will run some clock. 240 to go and a 25 point lead in the second half of an NCAA tournament game. 
Uh, the ease with which this happened tonight was so refreshing. What a win would have felt good if it was by one point or 25, but the 25 feels, I think, a little this bit. This feels better. It, it, yeah, it does. This feels better. All right, here's DGL. Oh, a little back step. Oh, oh not even close. But well, I like the confidence. Yeah. He is not short on that. That's that's what you get to do when you're up 25. Whoa. whoa. Hmm. Whoa. Come on. You little asshole. Can I say that on the pod? I'm sorry. This guy from Duquesne, did he get teed up or anything? No, that was like that was like two breaks ago. Right, that's what I thought. Well, come on, man. And then he's ugh, sit your ass down. Duquesne, sore loser. Duquesne, two fifteen to go. Duquesne looking to close the gap. And we got <laughs> a long two is not even close. Amani Hansberry gets. He does look like Captain Phillips. I'm Captain. not Captain Phillips. The, the, the Pirates are Captain Phillips. He does not look like Captain. Phillips. Does not look like Tom Hanks. Two minutes uh, to go. Eighty six sixty one. Here's Nico running point, getting the pick here from Amani Hansberry. Amani loves the three, but he's not going to take it. He drives it in, up and let's good. Let's go, Amani Hansberry. We're getting. We we're getting freshman minutes in the second round of an NCAA tournament game. Amani, who will be a big player for this program, but he doesn't really cover that. <laughs> too well that's okay we'll go we'll go shot for shot here 88 to 63 with 90 seconds to go dgl running point and actually is that nico or is that that is that nico was number 11 right I think so, yeah. okay yeah yeah nico this is, this is three nico. nico a deep oh, three yeah, uh, good. he got rim he it got rim good. good to go son yeah, all right good one release. one ten wow to go. that duquesne coach looks absolutely well, it's, thrilled it's his last game uh, poor guy. He's retiring, I think, after this. So poor that guy. narrative, Illinois gets to avoid that, fortunately. Amani gets the board. That's already two for him. All right, DGL with the ball. 50. We're in the last minute of the second round game, and Illinois is going to advance to the sweet freaking 16 All right, who against needs Duquesne. Points? Who wow. Needs points? Brad pumping up the crowd here, thanking his Illini fans for taking the seven and a half hour trek to Omaha. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Nico getting the pick from Amani. Kicks it over. Not a great pass, but this is going to be, I think, Max Williams in the lane. Shoot it up, kid. Oh, he's got He's going to go to the line. Hey, to Max shoot two. Williams, a chance to get on the board. You know, before we end this thing, we got to talk about Brad Underwood because we know the tangible things, the two Big Ten tournament titles, the regular season title, what probably should have been a regular season title in the COVID year, but Michigan missed a couple games. It was. It was yeah, well, it's be, yeah, for all intents and purposes, you're talking essentially four Big Ten banners, and now oh. you got over the hump in the NCAA tournament and eliminate what was the biggest narrative against him. I'm happy for Brad Underwood, and I'm, I'm happy that he's our coach. Yeah. As I was a little bit unsure after the way last season ended. So what a... What an ass- hey. wow. yeah. What uh, a resounding right. success of a year for Brad Underwood. You're right. You're right. And and look, you know, you were even saying it earlier in the season. There, there's nothing to dislike about Underwood. Underwood has this job as long as he wants it, and I sure hope that he stays with us for, I don't know, another 15 years in perpetuity. Right? 89 yeah. to 63. 20 seconds to go. The handshakes Already are hugging. starting, and Illinois, after a 19-year wait. I was a senior in high school at Urbana High School, and I remember it well. They beat Nevada. Eh, kind of a whatever sort of game. Not as impressive as what we just saw. Illinois 89-63 over 11 seed Duquesne will advance to the Sweet 16 in 2024. Brad Underwood gets over the hump. Where's my cigar? Let's go. And then we'll let these guys get around the heater here. Come on around, guys. Yeah. we got plenty of heaters. Scoot, scooch in. All right, so... Man, oh man, this feels good. And talk about, I mean, in a weird way, Kenton, kind of uh, anticlimactic. Not in a bad way, though. The best kind of anticlimactic. No, I, I, I enjoyed this thoroughly. Um, did, this was more fun than the first game, right? I mean... the First game was fun for 20 minutes, and this was fun for 40. Yeah. I, anticlimactic might be a good word. I just, there, there's, there's nothing about this that I... That was anything less than than totally enjoyable. And I want to be careful when I say that. It was the absolute best kind of anticlimactic. I mean, this is sure. just you outclassed an opponent in an NCAA sure. tournament game in, in the way that a 1 versus 16 would. Brad Underwood uh, talking right now to A.J. Ross. And I'm going to turn this up here and so I can listen to it. And 
He's a pretty happy guy. Ah, look at that smile. And they will face Iowa State on Thursday. He did mention checking the box there, which he talked about at the press conference, but it is more, about more than that for this Illinois team. Uh, wow. YouTube feed, how are we feeling? Sweet 16, indeed. Ben, celebratory mictors, celebratory piping hot DP Doe. Yes, that's right. This should be your second piping hot celebratory calzone from DP Doe for those keeping track. From Kara, not my Kara, but another Kara that listens to the podcast. So happy for this team and the fans. From Justin, thanks, fellas. Good job, Kenton. Spectacular as always, Carp. Well done, Ken. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. well done on Mike, too. From Jacob, happy for Underwood and the team. On the mark, house money from here on out. I think to a degree, absolutely, Mark. Of course, I want to win Thursday against Iowa State, but getting over this hump does take a lot of the edge off. Look, it, it takes a lot of the edge off. And again, let's go back and let's talk a little bit about the uh, path that Underwood has, that, that we've had to get to the Sweet 16 so far, right? Some tough games, right? And you have to break through. You have to get to that second weekend. But it didn't come easy. This is going to be another one of those games like Iowa State where it's like, let's see what happens, right? You obviously are expecting more, right? This team is capable of more, as those teams that got out early were as well. But Iowa State's a good team, man. And, you know, am I going to be nervous? Yes. But am I going to expect anything like this? Absolutely not. So let's just let's see what happens at this point. We're house money. That that's the best way to put it. I think so because you have an opportunity here to make the elite eight and well beyond that potentially. I think that this game in particular was so reassuring because it was a team that was locked in from the start. I I think if anything, Kenton, looking back to the first half of the Moorhead State game, I don't know if I'd call them jitters. But let's be honest, it's a different beast when you play an NCAA tournament game. And even if the players weren't feeling the weight of 19 years of not making the Sweet 16, they were at least feeling the weight of an NCAA tournament game. And I think that Moorhead State, like a lot of underseeded teams, they played their butts off. And it looked it in the first half, but then you took that game over. This looked like a team that was comfortable. They were locked in. And I think that's a scary proposition for Iowa State or even UConn. Like... Auburn might not be in the bracket anymore. Yeah. Illinois is. Illinois is the new Auburn in that bracket, the team that's not UConn, that a lot of people nationally will be thinking that might be the team. Well, it just feels good when you see this team doing what you know they are capable of doing at the right time. Think about this. When was the last time, if, if or was there any game this entire season where the team played like this, where you said, hey, now, I mean, obviously I some know. of the matchups, some of the matchups, you know, Duquesne is a tournament team, right? How many tournament teams did we play in the Big Ten? Not a ton, right? They are, I don't want to say ceiling because that's such a terrible word to use in the term, but they are doing everything that we know that they are capable of doing, and they're doing it in March. It just occurred to me, Ken, you were here the last time Illinois had a tip-off to end of game blowout like that. Missouri. <laughs> Bragging rights. That yeah. was a great game. I mean, and Missouri sucks. Duquesne's sure. better than Missouri. But some that game always ends up being a game. Every so year. that was probably the last time this team just ran it from start to finish. And even though they've won a ton of games, a lot of them have been second half dominance as opposed to 40 minute dominance. So all in all, just uh, just incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm giddy. I'm, I don't know how much sleep I'm going to get tonight, but in the best way possible, Illinois will be in the Sweet 16. I was 18 years old the last time they did that. That's way too damn long. But we were patient, and we waited. Now in year seven of Brad Underwood, not only is he getting Big Ten success, he's getting postseason success. That's a double whammy. That's like, oh, he's our guy. And I think for anyone that's still on the jury, you know, uh, anyone that's still kind of on the fence about Brad Underwood, this was the final hump to get over. And not only have you won two games, you have looked amazing for a good chunk of those first two games. Nothing fluky about getting through that bracket. And even if that was BYU on the other side, maybe you don't win by 25, but you probably won by 12, 13, 14. I mean, this team was not going to lose to whoever they played against tonight. Yeah, yeah. We Like I said, we, ha we had a good path. It, it, you, you were circling that Iowa State game from the beginning, but you were obviously thinking in the back of your mind, we have not gotten to the Sweet 16 yet in the Underwood era. So you hope that you would get there. But these first two rounds, no matter who you were going to play, BYU or Duquesne, uh, 
you just you had to take care of business, and sometimes that's really, really taxing for this team. But we did it, and we did it in statement fashion, and it feels great. From Greg, peaking at the right time, and it certainly feels like this team is. They are now 7-0 and away from the State Farm Center in the month of March. That's two road that, wins. Yeah. That's 5-0 and in neutral court games. That's a team that, if you're Iowa State, damn. Why this team? And I like being in the other side of this, Kenton, where you were not the – listen, one seed's great. You get advantages often in the bracket. But look at North Carolina today. They get Michigan State. We get Duquesne. Sometimes the NCAA tournament is all about the breaks that happen in front of you and oh, taking yeah. advantage of those breaks. And why I was so excited after Thursday and what I wrote about Friday and what I'll probably touch on tomorrow in my column on the 200levelpod.com. There you go. There we go. Cheap, cheap uh, plug there. Is – this unfolded for you from Sunday. You got the breaks before anything happened, before Duquesne beat BYU, before you played Moorhead State. But more importantly, not only did you take advantage of him, you won passing the eye test with flying colors, with stylistic points, looking like a team that can actually compete in Boston against the likes of an Iowa State or UConn. I don't think I'm going to sit here and say Illinois is going to the Final Four. But I would be foolish to say there's not a halfway decent chance of it. Because oh, yeah. the way they're playing right now, like tonight, or the second half of Morehead State, they could beat anyone. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, look, nothing against Duquesne. Duquesne is a good team. Uh, they are a better team than BYU. And Isaac said this, you know, of, between the four of us, they looked better than Morehead State, right? But this team, this team that played today, this team that played for 40 minutes today, that team can make the Final Four. 100%. So, yeah, exactly. is that team going to show up for a few more games? I hope so. It's hard for me to imagine they won't because they've basically well, done so for the bulk of the last month. And, and, I mean, and, from March 1st, they've lost one game to Purdue, which we would agree was not their best effort. And oh, yet, they play, it was right in front uh, of them. You well, remember, let me rephrase. It w the effort was there. The execution was not. I remember we were, we were both at that game at State Farm Center, which was, I mean, you know, that place has been sold out pretty much all year. It's been electric there, but that game was crazy. And I remember at halftime, I told you, I, we came, we, we met in the concourse, and I said, this is Final Four basketball, right? And were we – I think we were up at halftime, maybe, by a couple of points. By six. Yeah, Purdue was kind of trailing us kind of all game, and then all they finally game, came back. And then they, they got their run pretty quick yeah, in the second but, half. But, but even then, like that, that Purdue, I think – Purdue had to play their best basketball to beat us that night. And they did. The and they did. Half. And we looked great. It, so you're right. I mean, again, you got to tame your expectations because this is Illinois, and you still have that little thing in the back of your mind. It's like you know that they can just come out and just totally underwhelm you. But they're not doing it right now, and it's been quite a while since they have done that. So hopefully we're not jinxing them by saying it, but I think – it is fair for us to be excited about it at this 100%, point. 100%, absolutely. And, and to that point, from your right, you are right, Iowa State is going to be a huge challenge, but I don't care. I'm going to enjoy this for a week. Absolutely. The feeling, the feeling I have right now is what I had in 05 and 02 when I was in my late 20s and 89 when I was 13. Why not us? We know what it feels like. It feels like the feeling that I had last week after the Big Ten tournament times like two. Yeah, I would agree, because the Big Ten tournament was sweet, yeah. but... It was, I think, going to be made all the sweeter by making a Sweet 16 like this. Yeah. And now that they've done that, it's, it's, it's validated the right word? Absolutely. Yeah. And again, you know, the more and more this team continues to be on point and continues to win like this, the, the less and less you worry about them regressing like you know that they could, right? But that whole week after the Big Ten tournament, I kept saying, and again, this is just, this is just taming expectations and being, being, a, being a, 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 um, a humble Illinois fan, right? I said, you know, the tournament thing, getting past that first weekend, it's always been a – but no matter what they do, if they lose to Moorhead State in the first round, you will not take away that banner that we won in the Big Ten tournament. And that's why I felt so excited. Sure. Now, that's the same thing. This Iowa State game, I mean, that's a tough matchup, right? It would be a little bit different if we had somehow gotten lucky and we were playing some team that was not as good. But no matter what happens from this point out, you are not going to take away what has happened this year. This year is a – monumental first in almost two decades year for Illinois basketball, period, right now. Right now. Right now. It is an unqualified success. It could be more of a success. Of course, I'm going to want them to win, and I'll be super bummed out if they don't next Thursday. But 
it's not going to be quite the same feeling as waking up today like, please, for the love of God, you got to win this game. you got to win this game. Instead, it's going to be, all right, let's roll the dice. And that is a really nice position to be in as a fan where you think we can roll the dice. I still think we can win in rolling the dice, even against an Iowa State or potentially UConn. And it's the fact that I think, Kenton, we're sitting here and we feel positive about it. I think that team in that locker room thinks we're winning two games in Boston. Oh, now, yeah. oh, that yeah. doesn't, of course, guarantee a damn thing. But the fact that they were able to knock this dust off, get two wins already in the NCAA tournament, kind of get rid of the ghost of disappointing marches past. And now, my God, I mean, there, there's nothing in their way except good opponents, which, yeah, that's a big issue. But I think Illinois is a pretty damn staunch opponent themselves and one that, man, the Iowa State-Illinois spread, what are we looking at? Oh, one man. and a half. That I think it's going to be that's essentially a great, as close to a pick question. Yeah, as you're going to get. I mean, are you thinking plus one and a half for Illinois? Yeah, I or think it's going to be. I I don't know who it's going to be in favor of. Yeah, I just don't think that it's going to be more than one and a half. Oh points. no, no, it's it's going to be. And I I again, I'm um, it feels weird to not be humble, but that is going to be. Maybe one of the most exciting games next weekend in a tournament that has already had plenty of exciting games. Right? That, people if are both of that, we'll probably let's be honest, we'll probably be the late game on Thursday. Oh yeah, probably. That, that's okay. I mean, which is fine. Oh my gosh, I, I, if it's in the middle of the day, yeah. Well, no. What they do is, I think the games on Thursday because there's only four. They start at six, and they oh, end at like eleven or something right. like that. So they they do two games, and then the second are staggered, uh, staggered start times. But you're probably looking at I would say an eight thirty tip depending on what the other games are uconn will not play auburn had it been uconn auburn that would be the late tip in boston right. i think you're probably looking at illinois iowa state two versus three because let's see on uconn side we're gonna have yale versus i forget who the five seed in that bracket is and youtube feed you might remember who the five seed playing yale would be but I don't, I don't see that getting top billing over Illinois, Iowa State. So King Abbott Man says, I don't know if this is an early line, if they've possibly put it out already, but he says Illinois minus two and a half. Uh, Against Iowa State? Apparently so. Again, and then that, that might be a guess. Yeah, it, it, it likely is. I, I don't think they would have come out of line this early. So here's, a, here's an interesting thing from Bobo. It was meant to be Illinois. Let's see if you can pick this out. Okay. Illinois playing in Boston. Look up the cover of the Boston album. Is yeah, it looks like State Farm Center. It's a spaceship. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Is that, maybe that's what they're referring to, and confirm in the YouTube chat if that is what you mean, the spaceship on the Boston. Is that what you mean, Bobo? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, the spaceship landing in Boston. If you want to make that sort of metaphor, I'm cool for that. I, I'm not a big fan of the city of Boston as a Yankee fan, but you know what? It is. <laughs> it, uh, well, no, it is a cool city. And listen, it's... It's bright lights. It's East Coast. Yeah, UConn is the team standing in the way of Iowa State or Illinois making a Final Four. And as the as the defending champions, that's something to reckon with. But there is a certain level of pressure with being a defending champion. There's a certain level of pressure with being a one seed. There was something so invigorating, Kenton, about getting the three seed, which I have never experienced in my life. I mean, I was too young in 87 when they lost to Austin P as a three seed, and they were a 14. Um, I, I don't remember that, of course. But a three seed, being on the bottom side of the bracket, I like going that path. Yeah, Give me a two or three over a four, obviously. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, depending on the matchups, give me a two or three over being a one. Right. Because a oh, one, yeah. is, at worst, is going to play a nine at the, the eight, second nine round. Yeah, you're, abso yeah, so you're it, absolutely right. I mean, if they were to ever change it where they completely reseed it, and then you get the one seed playing the 14, that got that sprung the upset or something like that. Then that'd be different, but because it's so concrete, because it's such a static bracket, give me the three, yeah. and it's working out beautifully so far. That's a good point, man. We I gotta, like it. We got a cigar to finish. Anything else in the YouTube feed before we wrap up tonight? Uh, I mean, people are just excited. Yeah, talking a lot man. about Iowa State. Ben and the Iowa. Iowa State has three and four guys in double digits. They spread the love, and we'll have to be on our defensive P and Qs. But I think our speed will prevail. I think that's a good observation. I, I think. Look, I think what it ultimately comes down to is you keep playing like this. You're uh, going to play UConn. You keep playing like this. I'm not that worried about Iowa State, although Iowa State is a very, very good team. You keep playing like this. 
you're worried about UConn, but you're not really worried about much else. I think that's fair. Yeah. There is a way that Iowa State can knock you off of the game better than Duquesne, but I like that Duquesne was your matchup because in a weird way, they're Iowa State light times 10. Okay, I'm not comparing them to Iowa State, but what they do, like Iowa State, is they defend. You got points at will. You got a little bit sloppy late, but listen, this happens when you're up 30 points. I didn't expect Illinois to win by 40. If anything, I, I like playing a defensive-minded team ahead of playing Iowa State. Iowa State made a lot of big threes tonight against Washington State. Washington State metrics didn't love them. They were not the strongest seven seed, according to metrics. Uh, somewhere around 45 nationally, something like that. Iowa State, according to a lot of metrics, fifth or sixth. Illinois, tenth. But does that factor in just the explosive ability of a Terrence Shannon? Marcus, I think, will be the one to watch for in a matchup like Iowa State. Will he be able to do what he normally does against an Iowa State? That will be what concerns me. But you get the chance. And I think flip a coin. Flip a coin, and one really good team is going to advance to play UConn. Well, we've got a week to think about it. We've got a week to strategize. We've got a week to think about who needs to be on, like you had just said. Speaking of cigars, uh, JSAL rules. What kind of cigar you got there, Carp? Uh, okay, well, this is some from Variety Pack. It's called a Man- Mancanudo. Ma- Macanudo. Macanudo Inspirado. Yep. La Florida Minicana here. Okay. Uh, Jack Schwartz Importer in Chicago exclusive. Okay, I figured I would do the factory smokes for a less important occasion. <laughs> Nothing wrong with them, but I wanted to get a little fancier. Bobo confirms it is the spaceship. The spaceship is orange and blue on that album. Yeah, okay, orange, blue, definitely blue, and orangish red. I, it's one of the best album covers ever, but I love the metaphor, Bobo. Right we'll on. go with that. And I know Jeremy and Derek and Joey and other Illini riders on the beat are going to be happy to go to Boston and that this ride gets to continue. I am over the moon. I'm just going to wear orange and blue crap all next week. You know, revel in it, soak, soak yourselves in success because this is, uh, it's been way too long and it feels really good. Anything well, now, else, Ken, before now we we're, Now we're talking about cigars. So, Macanudos are my fave, Kevin. Uh, Rocky Patel 1999 is your rights brand. Ian, love you, Carp. ILL. I and I. Love you, too, Ian. I love all of you. I love all of you. We love you all. I mean, come on. This is, this is a beautiful thing. Everybody game. in the garage, we love you all. Oh, my God. What a game. All right, we got to go celebrate and get these guys further under the heaters because they're freezing their ass off, so... <laughs> Uh, YouTube, before you go, if you could subscribe to the 200 Level channel. Throw a like. That. Throw a like as well. That helps us as people try to find the podcast. And remember that we have a new website, the 200levelpod.com. I'll get a column up tomorrow. A column. Look at me actually using my journalism degree and making out a red cent from it. Just doing it for fun. But Good this team's fun to write about. And uh, we'll get a couple podcasts before Thursday's game against Iowa State. Illinois advances to the Sweet 16. That's it. That's the story. And it feels great. Have a great night, everybody. I'm not going to go to sleep for the foreseeable future. It's a long night of partying ahead. So we will see you soon. In the meantime, thanks to our sponsors, DP Doe, State Farm Agent Brian Hansen, Owen Builders, LLC, and of course, Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing. We will see you guys soon. ILL. I N I. It is the 200 level. Woo, you two. What's up? All right, thanks, YouTube. Subscribe on the way out. We appreciate it, and we will be back um, a couple podcasts before Thursday. See you guys. Justin's suggestion for the pod name, Duquesne Me Down.